completely different topic. So far, we dealt basically with a single core on a single node. But there are no processors, or hardly any processors, that have only a single core. Even your phones have four, eight cores. Um, laptops still are hovering between two and six. Um, so how can we use those other cores? Python in general has a problem with power processing. And that is, okay, that's not quite true. C Python, so the Python interpreter that most of us use has a problem with um, multi-threaded environments. And that is due to the global interpreter lock, which makes sure that every Python function is only accessed by one thread at a time. So if you are using the um, thread module from Python without doing some extra work, you don't get anything working in parallel. The process module alleviates this a little bit by moving this into multiple processes. Um, but not necessarily ideal either. For interactive parallelism, when they developed IPython, they also developed a um, module called IPy Parallel. And that's what I'm going to talk about here. IPy Parallel. is a server client system in the background. I actually have, well, in the end, I have three entities that communicate with each other. This is you. You are the client, or your notebook is the client. Your notebook talks to an IP controller, which acts as a hub. The IP controller takes messages coming from the notebook and sends them out to the IP engines. It also monitors the IP engines if they are alive. It checks if new engines are connecting. Um, it drops these engines when they become unresponsive for example, because your allocation for that job that started those engines ended. These messages that it sends can be both data and um, commands, functions, you can execute things. These IP engines here, I intentionally drew in different colors because they can live on different systems. You could have the same controller connect to, with some effort, um, a node on a remote cluster and the cores on your own laptop. This architecture makes it very flexible, but at times also a little bit tricky. Most people will just use, or for most people, all these three will actually run on the same system. So you have your client running on your node or your laptop, you have the hub running on the laptop, you have the engines running on the laptop. I sometimes use it that I have the um, Jupyter Notebook, so Jupyter Lab, Jupyter Notebook running on my laptop, controlling to a controller that lives on one of our login nodes, connecting to engines that are running on a batch node. I sometimes do that for data analysis. This way, my data remains on the login node. Um, I don't have to actually pull the data off the file system. And I can access this both from the office and from home. The client is started 
by using, um, well, by first importing it from IPy parallel, and then actually um, initializing it. So prof default is the default profile. Profiles allow us to set up different sets of clients. I could, for example, have a profile that connects me to my remote system and another one that works locally. The default profile is also loaded by default, so if I don't give an argument. Now, this connects my client through the controller to the engines. And our C here will now contain a list of all my engines. If I look at the IDs, which you'll do in the notebook, you'll actually see that it has a number of them. We don't usually act on these engines directly. Instead, we create a view first. There are two types of views. One is called a direct view. And <clears throat> you simply create that by slicing um, RC here stands for remote client, um, your RC here. So this, for example, would get me engines 0 and 1. This would get me engines 2 and 3. This would give me all the engines. So this view acts on all the engines. Since it was developed originally in context of IPython, you can use it very conveniently with IPython. It works without. You don't have to use the magic, but it makes it kind of convenient because um, there is this parallel execution magic. And in this case, I tell it to execute this on the engines, actually on the last view that was created, and also locally. So this actually starts or imports NumPy on all my engines and my front end. There are a couple of parallel magic commands. Um, this is the most useful one. Here I split the operation that I did before in one step where I used the dash dash local option. Here I did it in two steps. So if I don't do the local, actually the parallel magic will only act on the, par on the engines. And then I can do the import numpy separately locally. If I add the local option, it will do it on both engines and the local notebook. Everything you do with the PX magic, everything you add to your namespace, so if you assigned a variable, for example, within um, this line, or here you notice again, two percent signs, that means I'm acting on the entire cell. Um, without the local, it acts only on the engines. Each engine has its own IPython kernel running with its own namespace. Um, so imports are separate. I don't see things that I do on the engines locally. That's often a point of confusion. You thought you did an import NumPy already, then why the heck doesn't it work on your local notebook or vice versa? The default behavior is that blocking is true. That means um, when I send something to the engine, I wait for the reply. All right. Um, This is actually almost all that there's to it. You can also um, push and pull data, gather, scatter. You can execute commands on the remote en engines using the parallel magic. You can also do it directly, and we'll do that in a little more detail later with apply. In the back end, it's using a lot of lambda functions. Who knows what a lambda function is in Python? Okay, a lambda function is an anomalous function, a function without a name. You are used to defining functions like this. Right? Everybody has done this before. Maybe without the pass. 
Sometimes we don't need to define a function with a name beforehand. We just want to use it maybe in some sort algorithm or because we want to apply it somewhere else. Python allows us to define anonymous functions. Anonymous functions are called, also called lambda functions and in Python there's a special keyword called lambda. <clears throat> and um, This function, for example, would return the square of x. And you see here it defines a function. Now, since this doesn't have a name, there is no way for me to call it at the moment. But if I pass it as an argument to something that requires a function, this function doesn't need an extra name. It gets a name by variable assignment. So, for example, I could have um, something like this, which returns um, f of x. And now I can actually pass our lambda function here. and the argument, and it returns 4. So these kind of lambda functions are used extensively in IPy parallel notebooks, um, but behind the scenery. You don't have to use them, but you will encounter them in the second notebook, so I thought I introduced them. <coughs> All right, so your job now is to actually work through the interactive parallel computing with IPython for about five minutes, I guess, because then we are, oh no, 20 minutes, 20 minutes we have before lunch.